Hello everybody, this is Brad Dyke, reaching out to you to say hi, and I wanted to, to talk to you today about the nature of something that keeps coming back on me over and over and over, and I decided I'm going to address it. So basically, what it is, is, you know, when you go off and you buy storage arrays, in this case, like the NetApp series here you see, and over here, and let's say a 3PAR, and, you know, an HP chassis, you know, you get these hard drives, and they're formatted in 520 format. Which means no standard workstation, PC, or server uh, would be able to use them readily. Even a Linux box can't use it readily. So what you have to do is you have to format these drives in bulk. And that's not bad, except when you use Linux, you discover that, you know, with the way we do it today... You're doing one at a time, and in a single array, there's 24, here is 54, I have 76, and 126 disks, right? When you look at all these different encasements. So how on earth do you get away from having to reformat one disk at a time? And that's what I want to try to answer for you today. It only requires two extra steps from the steps I've already given you, and being able to do a standard format of a, of a hard drive from 520 format layout to 512k layout and it starts with basically some type of old machine could it be an old Dell box yeah all you need is, is the ability to plug in a SAS card and this is a SAS controller card this is a Dell specific card and you know it's a really good generalized SAS controller it will do a it will do about 128 discs, uh, fairly easy. 64 very well, 32 blasting like a can out of space. But point is, it's just basically a generic SAS controller. It's an HBA card, which is different than a RAID card because, as you can see, RAID cards can get rather wild, uh, and but they cannot actually work with a 520 format disc. So we want to keep the RAID card out of the equation. But with that being said, a SAS HBA or a non-RAID baseline SAS uh, uh, slash SATA controller will do just fine. And that would go in here. And then of course we have a simple uh, fifth generation here, old super micro chassis. It does a great job. Um, and it's your added first step. Uh, yeah, you still need a machine to format the hard drives. We get that in the SAS controller, and you know all that already. But in this particular case, we went one step farther. What we did is we installed Ubuntu on the server so we could run in GUI interface. And I'll explain. Yes, CLI is what keeps you from doing more than one disk formatting at a time. If we run through a GUI interface of Ubuntu... You're not limited that in that format anymore, and I'll show you how to get there. Right now, I'm going to put this together and get in the rack enclosure so that we can get this bad boy moving. Stand by. Okay, as we're getting this put back in, and we're starting the process of putting it into the rack enclosure for its placement, you notice that down here is the NetApp 2.5 inch SAS SATA bay. It's 24 discs, and it's in a general proximity of location of the server using the SAS cables. Okay, so and to go over the basics about connecting up, you've got your SAS controllers, uh, which can be mini SAS to SAS or SAS to SAS or SAS to mini control. But the point is, they have to lock into place correctly to work. And you then bring back your B channel and you get make sure that they snap in good. And if you look down here, you can see your A channels here. And then you've got a crossover cable to the other side, and then your B channel is here, and that's how you close the loop. Very important detail, don't forget it. You need it, you need to know it. But uh, with that being said, now I can hook everything else back up. Now, the other detail on this is the nature of how this device is going to respond. Uh, on its bulk formatting and that's just going to have to be a learning process for you 
in regards to how you tackle that. Now, but the key detail is you want to fully hook up everything for this Linux box. And there's a reason for it. Okay, so now we have the array prepped, ready to go, and it's solid. The back is cabled well. The front is paired. Testing whips are good. The BIOS is posting. It's going to come up now. It's going to initiate a scan, and I just put a bunch of new disks in there, which I've not formatted. And it's going to review them and eventually start rostering them up on the board here in a, in a second. Again, here is the Dell 6 GPABS SAS controller. Really good, solid card. Does a really good job in general in regards to how we go about uh, getting the HBA configurations to post correctly. And so here I'm starting to see them. I see the one giggers. And I'm seeing other disks, but they're NetApp, so I can't use them. But I know that because they're 450, 450 gig drives, and I will format them. So we're going to let the the next step happened. Now this next step is one of the two components that we are talking about. Okay? Instead of using a USB boot um, in Bluetooth, it's recommended that you put in a cheap hard drive and you install, as you see here me doing, Ubuntu on the server so I can bring it up in GUI mode. Why GUI mode? Good question. Because you can do one thing in that that you can't do from a baseline CLI command line, and it's to save you a whole bunch of time. Because if you look down here, see all those disks? Roughly about 15 of them. I did them in an hour and a half. If you did them in the CLI mode, that would be closer to 10 hours. That's right. 10 hours for 15 disks. You could even do more. You could do the entire 24 disk rack if you want. But to do that, you need to be able to put in play the GUI interface for it so you can do what you need to do. So that's what we're going to do. This machine is going to boot up and I'm going to transfer it to my desktop. Uh, and then I'll do a remote session into it so you guys can see what I'm talking to. But as you can see here, Ubuntu is coming up, and this will work out pretty good. So let's go ahead and let it boot up, and we'll continue. Okay, so right now we've got the Ubuntu coming up, and it's doing its thing. And uh, that's good. And then we have our ability to bring up our display screen the way we want, and... I'm going to already tell you that we, I'm going to make the assumption that you understand that you have to install the steps to get the SG3-utilities installed on your your uh, Ubuntu session. And you should have already done that to, to be able to do a single completed format. So we're not going to go over that. But what we are going to go over is this command line right here. And why is it so important to us? That's a good point. So I will show you why. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and do a sudo sg underscore scan dash i so that we can identify what disks are we going to be working with, how many. So with that being put in play, uh, I will basically turn around and have a list of the devices that I'm working with. More importantly, if you look here, uh, I'm going to know where to start from. So there are our ATAs. Those are a variety of different boot devices. And then of course up at the top, SG0 and SG, AT, ATA SG0 and SG2 and SG3 and SG4 are not on this list. They are the four boot option disks of the chassis. So we're going to skip those. So what we want to target after that is going to be SG5, right there. So let me explain how this will work. So we're going to start up a new terminal. And this is why this works better in a GUI interface footprint than in a CLI mode only. This is the problem we have all the time in the IT industry with um, 
working with um, CLI as a principal command control. And I know there are a lot of people out there who swear by I'm on a stack of Bibles and blah, 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 blah. And then they sit there for half a day running one line command at a time. This way you can do it and you can dramatically speed it up to just an hour or two for all the disks you've got opposed to being half a day or more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here the new command line, which is the one you already know about, which is the format 512 command. And But then I'm going to copy it. Uh, that's an important detail because when I copy it, I'm going to be able to launch it over and over and over and over and over and over and over into many, many, many sub-terminal windows. So stand by here for a second. Okay, so we're ready now. We have up here the actual command. As you can see it right there, and if it works correctly, it will post up just like you normally do anyways. This is nothing new to you because you've at least formatted one of these one at a time already. This is just a repeat of that process. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this SG side all the way back to sudo, and I'm going to copy it. That's important. Copy it, and get down to the here at the end, initiate, and go ahead and, and get your credentials in. and the formatting implementation begins. Now, that's it. Disk 5 has begun the process of formatting. So, here's this, the last part, the added step. Go down here, right click, new window, bring up a new one, right click, paste, do this time instead of SG5 disk, we're going to do SG6 disk, put it in, authenticate, And there's disk number two. You've already saved an hour right there. And you bring it up like that. And by pulling it up, remember that in the background, it's going to do its formatting. Okay? If the format fails, then you need to recheck your implementation because of the classification of the disk. But I think I know what the problem is here because these are all ATAs. What we want is SG10. So let's do that. We'll start SG10 up here. Repeat. Remove that, put that in. All right, there's SG10. And down here, we're gonna do it again, but SG11, you see down there. And we'll implement that. So now we're waiting. It has started. So that one is done. The very first job is finished. Then I'm going to bring this guy up here, right underneath him, like that. And he has started. And if you look up here, within a minute or two, you'll get a percentile value of progress. Would it potentially fail? Yeah, it could. But most of the time, it doesn't. You just basically are wanting to make sure that you've got the initial kickoff working and that it's doing its thing. And if you look down here, it's basically in this area here, right now, during the formatting. So, I'm going to flip this over here. I'm going to right-click again, and I'm going to do New Window Test. And I'm going to paste, and I'm going to put 12 in, authenticate. And it's off. So I already have a three here, so stand by here while I get a few more of these going. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like. But you see how they're progressing on the tops? So that's valuable. Hold on. Okay, so as you can see here, last night I did a lot more than these. But here we've got several. All cooking. All doing the things they need to do. And they are going through the disk list that I showed you. And um, some of these I already have apparently formatted, but I just wanted to get extra disks in there so that they were usable. But we have uh, pretty much the 450s being burned right now to get them to a point where they're really uh, going to be what we need them to be. And then above that we have the ATA 1.8 terabyte drives. But anyways, so the secret of this is how do you do a bunch of this stuff? Well, you need a chassis right here, or it could be a simple PC that has a PCIe slot for um, 
and PCIe style slot 3 or 4 for our SAS controller. You need something that's got lots of discs on it. And these run about 50 to 80 bucks a piece. Then you need the caddies, as you can see the caddy housing down there. And your cabling. And then you install Ubuntu local as an actual desktop footprint. And then you keep bringing up multiple terminal windows one at a time so that you can actually see the progress of all of your disks as they're doing their stuff. So we're already at 12% here. It took about 45 minutes to set this all up to make this video, so it's pretty much on track. But the nice thing is they're all burning together, which means in the span it took me to format one disk in a few minutes, I'm now doing all the disks in a few minutes. So that's very cool. Uh, this is Brad signing off. I hope you guys enjoy this and helping, hopefully I'm helping you get to a better place and avoiding all those extra costs and training that you just don't need. This is Brad signing off and if you like it, please mark it as a like. I'll let you go. Bye-bye.